Welcome back, Shalligators. Today, we are going to talk about Meghan and Harry's new Twilight movie poster. So sorry. Their Time Magazine cover, a uh, gift from the Facetune gods, about how they are the top of the heap of the most influential people in the world. Like, this world. It, there's not like a different one that they're talking about. They mean like, like this actual planet. I asked you guys on Instagram, do you guys... Do you feel personally influenced by Meghan and Harry? And those of you who said yes were like, I like her fashion and it does influence me. You know what? I got to say that's true. I have tried her like signature low bun many times. I just look like a founding father. It's actually not cute at all. She pulls it off in a great way. But other than that, the resounding answer was no, I'm not influenced by Meghan and Harry. If, I mean, if it's anything, it's like, I don't want to be like them. So they're influential, perhaps in a way they are not striving for. So I asked you guys, like, what's the topic here? And you guys came up with just an absolutely brilliant idea. How to know how people see you. How to make sure your self-perception, how you want to be seen, matches up with what you're projecting to the world. We're going to talk about this. I get <laughs> a lot of feedback about how people see me. So believe me, girl, like I've walked through the fire on this one. I can tell you some tips on how to do this and, you know, some easy ways that are going to give you maximum benefit with minimal sort of like ego blows because bleh, sometimes you ask for feedback and you're like, oh no, that's enough. No, 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 please stop talking. Just don't put it back, put it back in your mouth. But before we get started, A reminder that if you have a love question you need answered with me, you want to chat one-on-one, -on -one, head to my website, shallonlester.com. You can get an Instagram review. You can submit a question. There's a new feature where you can get help in just 24 hours because sometimes the bullshit is at your doorstep and you can't wait. Also, be sure to follow me on right here on in no YouTube Shorts, also Instagram Reels and TikTok, where I'm doing little short form content, content little rants day to day about some celeb news that might pop up that doesn't have a big advice hook that we need to discuss in a full video, but I still need to talk a little shit and they're hopefully pretty funny. So I think you guys might like those. I'm Shallon XO on Instagram and TikTok. You might like it. And if you need a birthday shout out or a little video chat with me one-on-one, -on -one, head over to Cameo. I'm Shallon XO over there. It's a, I love doing cameos. It's so fun. It's like I can send a little fun message to your friend if they need a pep talk. If you need a pep talk, you need something worked out, um, just be okay with maybe my hair being in a messy bun and not looking as good as Meghan Markle doing it. So sorry. So yeah, first of all, can we talk about this cover? Did they, what? It, there's so much to unpack. I mean, someone said Harry gets like the beta male cuck winner, like award of the year. Like he's like peering behind his wife. Like if a picture is worth a thousand words, yes. So one of you guys also said finally her photo or her head is as big as her ego. <laughs> Also, it's just so bizarrely photoshopped, you know? And I find her pose when she holds her hand like this, which is very tentative. It's like, oh, me? Oh, I'm just, I'm just so like meek and my I have done a lot of videos on Megan and Harry, and the word I always go back to with her is calculating. She is downright Machiavellian. And if fucking one more person in the comments comes here who doesn't even follow this channel, it's like, you're racist. You don't like her because she's black. First of all, I have seen her driver's license. She was a source for us at uh, AMI. I've seen her driver's license. You know what it says? Caucasian. She didn't start trotting out her blackness until it was convenient. I mean, not that she's not half black. I mean, she is. But like, this is a card she has decided to play because it, because it is this get out of um, judgment free card. Not here. I am judging her as I would judge a white woman. That is actually a quality. Ooh, yuck. That feels unpleasant. Well, a quality sometimes can be. It doesn't always work in your favor. Anyway, that's not why I don't like her. I dislike her because she's, like I said, calculating. She separated a man from his family. I don't appreciate a man doing that to a woman. I think it's abusive. We know this. I don't think it's any cuter when a woman does it. And you can say, well, his family is toxic. Okay, that's his choice he needs to make then. He cannot default. Let's say you're a big Megan fan. Let's say I am too. Why should that be her burden to fix him and get him away from his family? Is he really so beta and so cuck he can't do that for himself? If that's the way it was, he should have done it before he even married her and not pinned it on her. They're so mean to her. They're so mean to her. That's why we have to leave. Stand up for your fucking self, Harry, and for your wife and say, we have to leave because of me. It has nothing to do with Megan. Maybe they're perfectly nice to her. I do not feel like this is a healthy dynamic. 
So in this uh, Time Magazine, the increasingly irrelevant Time Magazine, let us never forget who Time Magazine declared Man of the Year in 1936. Do you know what that was? Who was it? Who was it? Oh, gosh. Was it Mahatma Gandhi? No, it was Adolf Hitler. They also declared Donald Trump Man of the Year. So amazing track record thus far. I mean, I'm sorry. I don't care if every other person you declared Man of the Year turned out to be like the most wonderful person. You, you declared Hitler and that's kind of going to follow you. I digress. In this article, so all of these people, there's like a hundred people on the most influential list and the article was written by someone who knows them to make it the most, the least objective, the most fawning, obsequious, gushy, literary hand job that journalists could possibly trot out. And the person who wrote theirs was like this chef and he... Um, he runs this thing called like World Kitchen. It's a great organization. They go around the world and, and feed people basically. And I've donated a lot to them and they're great. But it's like, you ever read those articles where it's like, it's like pelican attacks, unsuspecting toddler. And then there's this paragraph from an expert. It's like pelicans would never do anything like that. Pelicans love toddlers. Pelicans are gentle birds. And you're like, did a pelican write that? That's what this article was like. Like, did a Meghan Markle write this? So what he wrote is short and sickeningly sweet. He starts off with this um, anecdote about Harry when he was giving an interview. Um, and, and at the time he was in the military, he was an Apache gunner, helicopter gunner. And he's like getting interviewed. And in the back, there's like an explosion. He's like, oh, and he rips off his microphone and runs toward the action. Wow. That's literally the job of a soldier. I mean, I don't know that I could do it. I could. Not everyone has that capability to run in when other people run out, but it is your job, okay? And to be like, he is just extraordinary. He was not the only person on that base probably running towards the action. It's just that he was the most famous one. It's just like, okay, like again, you want this participation trophy. The same sense of urgency drives Megan. Oh, are we comparing her to a soldier? Okay. Who has long been an active humanitarian, powerful advocate for women and girls. You know what? That I will agree with because holy fucking shit, do we admire her about how she wheedled the shit out of Harry? Wow. The only time she truly is influential to me is when I think how to hone in on a man's shadow self, get my hooks into him and destroy him. Megan did it and I'm impressed. This work feeds my soul. Springing into action is not the easy choice for a young Duke and Duchess. She's 40 who have been blessed through birth and talent. Okay, so these struggles, are are they struggles or are are they blessed? And why is springing into action not an easy choice when you have every advantage in the world? I'm confused. They've been burned by fame. Fame they purposely sought? Fame Megan sought as a professional actress and a duchess to a man who she targeted by wearing his dead mother's perfume on their first date? A woman who hired three different PR firms to ensure her name was in the papers and on blogs every single day? Okay. It would be much safer to enjoy their good fortune and stay silent. Safer? That's not what Harry and Meghan do. It's not who they are. They turn compassion into boots on the ground through their Archwell Foundation. What the fuck does that thing do? Can you tell me? I don't know. I know what Habitat for Humanity does. I know what Feeding America does. I know what God's Love We Did... Well, liver does. They deliver uh, meals to homebound people. They give voice to the voiceless through media production. Huh? Are you trying to? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Hand in hand with nonprofit partners, they take risks to help communities in need. What risk would that be? Offering mental health support to black women and girls in the U.S. Is that risky? And feeding those affected by natural disasters in India and the Caribbean. Also, the risk. Okay. In a world where everyone has an opinion about people they don't know, the Duke and Duchess have compassion for the people they don't know. That is a basic human emotion. Again, you want a participation trophy for having compassion for people you don't know? If you don't have that, if there's an absence of that, you're a sociopath. So you want applause because you're not a sociopath? That kind of tells me you might be a sociopath. Did a pelican write this? They don't just opine. They run towards the struggle. What motherfucking struggle? I just, okay. This, uh, these are the most vexing, irredemptive people. And you know, 
what stands out to me throughout this whole bullshit with Meghan and Harry and the Oprah interview and relieving and Harry's book where he skewers the or his interviews where he talks shit about his family it's like someone online said this right it's like I don't understand what they want do they want privacy then why are they all over the place I I called it. Remember when they were leaving the monarchy, I said, you know what? I think this is a PR move because they want to be big celebrities. But you know, if they move to like Calgary, Utah, Namibia, I'll be like, you know what? Props to you guys. You really do just want a quiet life. If they move to California, they're full of shit. Guess where they moved? I mean, I am just evil enough that I can understand the machinations of manipulative people. I can. It's like I can double agent this shit and give you guys insight that because you're good people, you probably can't see. Maybe trust that it takes a thief to catch a thief, okay? What do they want? Do they want to be left alone? Do they want to be like reality star? Do you want to be a real housewife? Like, do you want to be a philanthropist? Like, I just don't get it. Do you want to just murder your family, Harry? Maybe just try it. Just... Go for it. See if you can push the queen over one of her corgis and be done with it. I don't, the whole thing, it's like, we want privacy, privacy. That's why we're talking to Oprah because we want to be left alone. I want to talk to Oprah. The whole thing just never makes sense, right? I also don't, <laughs> so there's other people on here that I've literally, I mean, some people they put on this influential list, Billie Eilish, absolutely. Um, Kate Winslet, I mean, I love her, but is she like influential? They, they need to come up with a different term because like I said on Instagram, like clickbait and influence are not the same thing. Like Trisha Paytas is clickbait. And if you just go by like clicks per mile, as we call it, like you'd be like, oh, she's really influential. Ah. I mean, honestly, probably one of the most influential people in America right now is Dixie D'Amelio. I know. But I mean, think about it, right? It's Addison Ray. It's Kid Leroy. It's Nicki Minaj. It's like people you don't want to hold up as like representing our civilization right now, but like they are influential, you know? And I want to know who truly, when you think of celebrities, who influences your life? Because it is a fact that the number one opinion leader in anyone's life is our parents. It is. And that's why I think homeschooling is kind of fucked up. But it's like your parent is already the number one leader. Like get get a teacher in there, a, a guidance counselor, a basketball coach. Like get some mixes up in this. But yeah, some of these icons, I mean, and true, I'm not very like politically astute about what's going on around the world. Naomi Osaka. Oh, is she influencing you to not do your job either? Honey, you got to answer press questions. That's part of your job. Does it suck? Yeah. Do we all have parts of our job that suck? Yeah. Do you get to cry and run out of the building when your boss asks you to clean the frozen yogurt machine at the end of a shift? I bet you don't. And if you do, you probably don't get to come back. Ooh, Dolly Parton. We agree. But like Miley Cyrus wrote that. And most of these people I have not heard of. Kathy Park Hong. She seems cool. Manjusha P. Kulkarn. Carney, Russell Jung, and Cynthia Choi. They seem serious, like serious people. Phyllis Omido. Okay. Dorotia Redai. Olympia Corral Mello Cruz. That's a cool name. Kamala Harris. Cop. I don't know who any of these people are. It's like reading someone else's yearbook. Are you influenced by Joe Biden, Dolly Parton, Yes, that's a big yes on Dolly Parton. But like who truly does influence you? And it's okay if the answer is embarrassing. Kim Kardashian influences me. All the Kardashians do because as I navigate this career, I look to them as how they navigate certain situations or like feeling like a fish out of water or taking risks or being gracious or talking about money or negotiating. And I'm like, okay, how would Kris Jenner handle this? I'm not ashamed. It doesn't matter where you get that inspiration if it truly does make you better. Um, so yeah, I want to know. And I, one of you guys said, and I'm going to toot my own horn, toot toot motherfuckers. <laughs> You're like, Shalyn, you have more influence on me than Megan and Harry. And I truly do consider myself like an actual influencer, not like, mm, hats. Here's a, here's a messy bun. Like hopefully I'm influencing you guys to make truly better decisions and have better outcomes in your life, you know, because I've made all these mistakes. God knows the hardest of hard ways. I'm trying to help everyone avoid that. So hopefully I'm doing a good job. Um, but yeah, I always want to know like who, who influences you guys? Cause I need some good mentors myself. We all do. So let's get into how we can make sure 
we are having positive influences. Not like in the sense of becoming an influencer, although this will help you if that is something that's on your mind because you, influence and perception is branding, right? It's essentially branding. I know we've all seen commercials for a product or a car or something and you're like, why are they talking about that aspect of it? <laughs> like there's something actually really cool about that product, but this is like, not it, you know? Like I saw a commercial for like White Claws or something and it was talking about the flavor. There's no flavor like this out there, flavor. And I'm like, I drink White Claws because it's two carbs. And that's why, like, why aren't they mentioning that? I just, so if you truly want to brand yourself in an effective way, you have to know what people see, what you don't see, and how to amplify the best parts of both to your audience, whether that audience is a boy on a date, your coworkers, your classmates, your family, people on the internet for maximum positive impact on both sides. Both sides, that's key because if you're only caring about the impact on one side, your side, that is, I hate to say the word manipulation because I'm trying to get us out of the typical definition of manipulation is like, oh, it's such a bad thing. Manipulation is also charm. Manipulation, we manipulate the world all the time. But if we only care about our outcome and not the other person's, it's Machiavellian. And we don't want to be like that, you know, even if it is in our nature. And we can use that a little bit. Evil week is coming. But we can talk about that a little later. So when it comes to our influence, there's two circles. I'm sorry I can't make a circle with this broken hand. Is this not so so on brand that I'm stuck like this? Like I have to drive, like when I drive, I have to hold it up because it hurts, like if I hold it down. And people are like, well, fuck you too. I'm like, I'm sorry. And one guy even pulled back up. He's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that your finger was broken. I'm like, it's okay. Montana, only Montana when they apologize. Anyway, <clears throat> there exists two circles, self-perception and public perception. And notice I didn't call either one of these things reality because neither one of them are like they both are but also neither is and it's important we don't view one as reality and the other one as false think about it we all know people who have this idea of themselves that is absolute bullshit like Meghan Markle it's like I'm just so kind but I'm also such a victim but I'm a warrior but I'm a victim and it's like you're kind of neither girl you're okay but then we also know people who are chronically misunderstood by society, by their friends, by boys. Like we watch our friends get dumped or ghosted or mistreated. And you're like, ah, how the fuck would that guy be mean to my best friend? She is a, she's a prize. She's amazing. She's a gem, right? So one perception versus internal versus external perception. One is not right and one is not wrong. The goal is to have these two circles overlap. It's a Venn, right? And most of us, have a Venn that overlaps in some way. The worst people on earth are way the fuck over here. How they see themselves and how other people see themselves do not relate at all, don't relate at all. And so to have that perfect overlap is the goal, but it's a very esoteric goal. It's like the goal of enlightenment. It's the goal of like perfect unattachment to all of our possessions and people, right? But if we can just make that the goal, we can move a little bit closer towards it. And even a subtle shift actually creates huge impact. So sit down and write out both, write out, put both things. I remember we had to do this in like college and it was the ickiest exercise, like how you see yourself and how you think other people see you. And it was a psychology class and we had to like read them out loud. It was like truly traumatic and humiliating. And the, the, the professor just sat back. He was like, at the end, he's like, such bullshit. He's like, none of this is true. Like we all... The, how we think the world sees us is just hopes and wishes. You know, it's it's what we hope. And the bad things about ourselves, it's like, she's too pretty. You know, it's, come on. It's like, oh, she's blunt, but it's to help other people. And your friend's like, oh, you're harsh and you give really mean opinions that nobody asked for. You're like, oh, okay. But it's important to get some eyes on this and at least have a baseline. And if you can't bear to do how people see you or you truly don't know, because if if you're drawn to this video, you might be like, I, I don't fucking know how guys see me. I don't know how my boss sees me because I'm not getting promoted. I'm not getting laid. <sighs> okay, that's fine. Put that to the side. Just do the one about yourself. How do you see yourself? Not how do you want to see yourself. How do you see yourself? 
Because you're going to get a lot of clarity if you're writing things down like incompetent, stupid, weak, cowardly, easily manipulated. I don't want you thinking that about yourself. Now I want you to rewrite that, but do it how you actually want to be seen. Well, I want to be seen as someone who's brave and strong. Okay. What can you do in your life to create that feeling from inside? We talk about confidence sometimes the way we talk about money. If you could create your own confidence from the inside and not have to rely on it from the outside via compliments, feedback, dates, paychecks, whatever, it would be like being able to print your own money. Would you ever go work again? If you could print actual money at your house? No, you would be a closed circuit. It's like, I don't fucking need any of you. Let's try to do that with confidence. So when I say this, to print your own confidence, you wanna be seen as brave? What can you do that's brave? I've said before, God doesn't give us bravery. God gives us opportunities to prove our strength. You know, God gives us a problem where we have to drum up that bravery and charge through it. But if we think we're going to wake up and have this like lionine sense of bravery and I'm not afraid of anything, that's probably unrealistic. And it's asking kind of too much from the universe, from our confidence, from all this stuff. So I say that because I want you to look at what these negatives are that you're writing down and come up with actionable things to do to flip that script. Because then you're not going to be relying on that other bubble, that how people see me, to inform how I see myself. Warm-blooded. We talk about being warm-blooded here a lot. Cold-blooded animal, a snake, they they rely on their environment to stay alive. Warm-blooded animal doesn't. They regulate it from inside. It comes from here. We can be that emotionally, and that's one way to do it. I feel like, though, this is kind of inverted. I should have talked about perceptions and how to gain those perceptions and then how to fix it, but instead we jumped right to how to fix it. So, okay, let's work backwards. How do you know how people see you? Did you guys ever watch a show called The Grinder? It was only on one season on TV and I like binged it on a plane. It was with Rob Lowe and that kid from Wonder Years, uh, Fred Savage. It was so funny. It's like their brothers and Rob Lowe was like this TV lawyer called like the grinder and just like a total like (laughs) TV doof. Show gets canceled. He moves in with his brother in this small town who's an actual lawyer. And he's like, I'm going to be a lawyer too. It was so funny. But there was one episode where um, Rob Lowe's like teenage niece, Fred Savage's daughter. She's like, I don't know. I feel like people at school just don't like me. And he's like, do a focus group. He's like, that's what we do in TV to find out how people feel about a character or an actor or a show. Yeah, you bring them in, you do a panel, you hand out little questionnaires and they fill it out. And then someone goes through all the data and they're like, hey, they said you'd be more likable if you like stop doing this or do more of that. And it's true. I mean, that's exactly how celebrities operate. And they have handlers and PR firms who send out. I mean, it's something literally called a Q score, like the letter Q. And if your Q score is like upside down, it means people hate you. Like the highest Q score is like, I think like Shaq and The Rock have like the highest Q and Santa. I don't know why they're pulling Santa Claus, but, and like the lowest Q score, I think for a long time, like obviously like Adolf Hitler is the lowest, Q, but like Donald Trump was underwater for a long time. And so there's a lot going on there. But when you're dealing with celebrities where people are branding themselves and they're, the perception that the world has about them equates to dollars, career, opportunities, they get very, very granular about that feedback. And it fucking sucks. And every celebrity I know who has to do this, they're like, I hate Q-score time. I hate feedback focus group time. Because who wants to hear like, I despise her, right? And on the show, like on the grinder, like the, the teenage girl, she, she got all this feedback. And she's like, that was painful, but it was so helpful. It was such a distilled way to advance because I actually know what people think now. So I'm not saying you go out there and hire a PR firm to do your Q score. I'm not saying you hand out questionnaires in gym class, but get sort of a cadre of people you genuinely trust in various different categories. Let's say you're having trouble with dudes and you're having trouble at work, right? And I, you know, I said at the beginning, you might not know how people perceive you and you might just feel upside down in general. like. I don't know, man, I'm doing my best and the outcomes are terrible and I can, you know, the common denominator is me, if it is. What am I doing wrong? I like feedback. We've done videos about feedback though. And in order to have feedback that we're gonna listen to, you're gonna listen to that, I'm gonna listen to, people either have to, there has to be a, a 
thread of mutual respect. I don't want feedback from strangers on the internet. Who the fuck are you? Why would I want your opinion? Do I want your life? Okay. Or they do something in my similar category. If it's another influencer and be like, hey, you should do this and that. It's like, I might not know you, but I respect that you're on the same path as me. Okay, so you get a, you get a voice here. You get an audience. If not, if it's strangers, if it's the mob, it's someone you don't know, someone you don't respect, someone you don't, you don't look up to, get the fuck out. Shut, the, shut up, man. I didn't ask you. And you can, you can weed that out. So you need to get that cadre of people you respect. Ask your coworker. Maybe not a coworker, actually, because they can have their own skin in the game. Someone maybe in a different division at work. Someone maybe <clears throat> who's met your coworker. You know, I don't know. This is, this is where you're going to have to use your own judgment. Maybe someone in your industry who used to work at that company, now they moved on. Or maybe a coworker. And just be like, I don't understand why I'm not getting promoted. Like, I think I'm doing everything right. I'm working. I'm staying late. What do you see me doing wrong or right? I think of myself as a hard worker and a straight shooter. What do you think? Give people some time to respond. Maybe send it in an email. Be like, hey, I love you. We're going to meet for drinks on Happy Hour Friday. But here's something like, just have this in the back of your mind. Because I would love to talk about it and get your thoughts. Email is great because then you can digest the responses at your own pace. Feedback is very difficult. We are creatures ruled by our egos. We think we're ruled by our mind and our heart. I'm just a heart for it. No, you're ruled by your ego, which is crazy because it doesn't actually exist. I used to think an ego was like an organ when I was a kid because I'd heard about it so much. I wish it was and you could just cut it out. But it's not. It's everywhere. It's your sense of identity. And the heart heals fast. The mind comes up with reasons to move on from a problem. The ego it's like a house of cards. You poke it, it falls over. It is very difficult to put itself back together. So take things in bite-sized chunks. If someone starts going off and you're like just sitting there at brunch wanting to kill yourself, you can't process it. Your defense mechanisms kick in and actually now there's more harm than good. Now you're resentful. You're certainly not taking in any of this feedback because your ego is wounded. So even employ yet another party. You asked your friend to give you feedback about something. Ask a third friend to come in and do what they do in the grinder, do what they do in Q scores. Someone to kind of cannibalize that data, crunch the numbers and be like, overall, Michael feels that at work, you're a straight shooter, but you're too straight and it rubs people the wrong way. Or you don't give people enough time to talk in meetings or the, the boss is threatened by your ideas because he knows he can't come up, right? Someone who can deliver things in a little softer way and offer to do the same thing for them. If you're dealing, if you and your friends sit around bitching about, it's like, I, I don't know, guys, I, they never call me back. I, I'm not getting promoted, whatever, whatever. Be like, let's be each other's Q score monitors. Let's do this together. Let's do our own focus groups. Now, when it comes to dating, you're probably not going to call up X's and be like, hi, would you like to tell me why you don't like me? No. But you know what, girl? Our friends know. Our friends know. When my best friend Diane visited a few weeks ago, I was like, tell me what I, what you perceive. And say perceive. Like, because th this, is, this is their perception. This is not carved into stone. It's not the truth. Remember, we're not using the word reality. We're not using the word reality. But from your perception, what do you think I do wrong with guys? And her answers, I'm like, I, I realize that you don't see me date in real time. You know what I tell you. You know just the highlight reel, age, name, you know, occupation. And she's like, I think you're going for dudes who are too young. And I think they literally don't know how to handle you. I think they're so like bamboozled by you. They're like mesmerized by you. But then they're almost like paralyzed by that mesmerization. And they're like ineffective boyfriends, you know? They're just, they can't keep up with you. And they're like, I just, I can't even try. I'm like, Okay, okay. But I was really ready for the feedback. I thought she was going to be like, you do this and this and this, you know? And if you're brave enough, you can get really granular as well. It's like, tell me what you think I do physically that's wrong with guys. Not like we need to change who we are for guys, but it's like, well, girl, you dress way too slutty on your first dates. You kind of don't comb your hair. It's like, whatever that might be. That matters. What do you think I do publicly that's influencing my outcomes on dudes? Look at my Instagram. This is actually a service I offer. You can uh, submit 
to me on my website, shawnlister.com, and I'll look over your Instagram and give you some real talk feedback about the message that it's sending. Like, is it something good? Is it something bad? Like, I... I had a girl, uh, this this is what comes up a lot, is like girls will be like, what do you think of my Instagram? And it's like a lot of these like, I call them Kylie shots. You know what I mean when I say that. It's like very like posed, very like serious. There's no humor. There's no levity. There's no I'm making fun of myself. It's all very like, uh. And then the caption doubles down on that and it's like a rap lyric. Drake just came out with an album, White Girls Everywhere, writing down things to put on Instagram. It's like, touch the fire, get burned believe that and it's just like what is that what okay you look basic like that's not creative it's literally the the least original and most cliche thing you can do on social media um it offers zero insight into your actual personality and if you're using the words of other people i can only assume you have no personality of your own to come up with your own ideas captions from a branding standpoint it's like i would love to know what you're wearing where are you how did you Pick that makeup. Tell me about the history of this region. I, you know, like there's there's no actual benefit for me as a as a viewer. <sighs> anyway, I could go on about this, but I mean, ask your friends. It's like, what do you see me doing in a 360 way that is influencing the outcomes that I do not enjoy? And you can also ask them what you're doing right, and you can say up front, like, please don't just give me this like horrible blitzkrieg of terrible things that I'm doing. I also need to know the things I'm doing right. I mean, be upfront. I say that to people all the time if I want feedback. It's like, here's some cookies that I made. Tell me something you like and tell me something you don't. Like, I need both, you know? It's okay to be like, my ego sensitive. Like, because the last thing we want to do is get defensive, have that ego poke and be like, and just hiss back. Then the learning stops. Then the growing stops. And then the resentment sets in. Suddenly that friend who you asked is the enemy suddenly you're you double down you have something called confirmation bias we've talked about that before uh, in a video about kim and kanye people want to feel right so they're going to find reasons in their mind to justify their behaviors and their beliefs because we would rather be right than crazy you know wait i voted for that person but i actually think he's evil people rarely say that like okay i mean yeah he blew up that kitten orphanage I mean, don't you think he had some good reasons? I'm sure he had some good reasons. That's an example of confirmation bias. We see this now more than ever in the world. It's really depressing. But overall, this is my biggest tip. Come up with your keystone values, your four, let's say, pillars of identity. Truly, who are you? I say this because if you can be like, I am altruistic, like I'm giving, I'm loyal, I'm ambitious, I'm glamorous. It can be something, you know, it can be something, right. Focus on the world seeing these four things. And then other things that they might have an opinion about. Oh, well, Shallon, she's kind of a bitch. <laughs> I know that. But okay, people can see me a bitch as long as they also see me as altruistic, ambitious, glamorous, whatever, you know. Okay, that's fine. I'm willing to take those L's in terms of perception and be like, they're not... Not everyone's going to know me. You, you might think I'm a bitch because I'm ambitious and I'm gunning for that corner office and so are you. So you're going to interpret that as a bitch. Fine. Fine. You might say that I'm weak because I'm giving and I stopped to give money to homeless people. <laughs> okay. You're just spinning one of my keystone values into something negative. That's fine. There's always people who are going to hate the sun. There's people who are going to hate the rain. Whatever. Don't focus on that because you can't win every battle. You cannot, you cannot really get those two bends to overlap. You can hope for the intersection. And in that intersection will be those four keystone values or five or two or however many you delineate. But I think four is kind of like a good number, you know? It seems like that's easy. And if you don't know what those are, ask your friends, work back, work backwards. What four traits do you think defines me? And they might be completely different than the ones you're thinking of. They might be like, giving. Well, you are, but... No, I think, you know, one of your key traits is that you're creative, you know, or you're stable. Like, that's amazing. You don't know. And then stop and be like, hmm, creative. I do like that. Maybe that's better than giving. Because maybe if I try to present myself as so giving all the time, I get taken advantage of. Hmm. Creative, though. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. Okay, now we're on to something. Now we have purpose 
and control over crafting that public perception, okay? But you can't do that until you get the data. You cannot change what you don't acknowledge. And it's icky, it's difficult. But you know what? Women like us, we're not afraid of icky, we're not afraid of fucking difficult. That's who the bait is out there, that's for the cucks. So the men hiding behind their women in those unflattering white pantsuits with the bleats. That's not for us. We are women of action. I want to know truly who influences you. And again, like it can be silly and it can be embarrassing. That's okay if it makes you a better person. I mean, people are influenced by the Bible, characters in the Bible. They're characters, you know? Maybe they were real, maybe not. People are influenced by fables, by Harry Potter. You know, it's there is no wrong way to better yourself. There is no wrong way. And the people who tell you that there is benefited from you not bettering yourself at all. So anyone who shames you for who you're influenced by can go fuck themselves. You you at them in the comments and I'll take care of this because that's what I do, honeys. I pull up for you. I love you guys. I will see you later. Um, we will be back with some more videos soon. And like I said, don't forget to find me on TikTok, Insta Reels, and of course here on YouTube Shorts for tiny little celeb rants every day and new and exclusive content across all three platforms. I don't repeat. Love you guys. See you later.